Hi, I'm Dustin with Overworked Logic. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Simple Plus to make a countdown timer in minutes and seconds. The source code for this project is available at the link below. Before I get started, I wanted to mention that I tried to do this in Simple using a bunch of symbols. I thought it would be really cool to show some things like ring counters and how they could be used to create timers. I spent a bunch of time on it and it was just getting too complicated as you can see. I decided to create it in Simple Plus and it was actually a heck of a lot easier. So I'm going to show you how I did that. The panel layout is very basic. It's just one page with a serial join and some digital presses and feedbacks. In Simple I've got this panel definition with just a couple presses, no analogs, and just the serial countdown text here. I've found that it can be kind of complicated to create timers and delays and stuff like that in Simple Plus. So instead of doing it in Simple Plus, I'm basically using an oscillator. This is driving everything. It's got a high time of 0.1 seconds and a low time of 0.9 seconds. So that creates this square wave that just has a pulse every second. That's triggering into our module here. I'm gonna show you what that looks like in a second. I started building this using the stepper with progress and repeat. Now this is just a stepper that's doing a bunch of things. We got thing one and thing two, if you like the uh, Dr. Seuss stuff. And run count, um, that's my busy signal. That could drive a pop-up. I have another video about that. This has a duration of things that happen. Rather than using total time high and total time low, I wanted to make things easier. So I just built a module in Simple Plus that has parameters for minutes and seconds, and it's going to track the time counting down in seconds from the values that you put here every time it gets hit by this oscillator pulse. It formats a string, and that's what I'm showing on my touch panel. And then I also have something to start and reset the count. That's the button that you saw on the touch panel. It's countdown done, it's a pulse, and I just put it through a one shot that makes it a little bit longer. So let's take a look at Simple Plus here. So I've gotten rid of the template when you create a new Simple Plus module just to make things simple. I've got a help. This is what happens when you press F1. It'll show you this. And then we've got digital input. The reason I did skip skip is it moves everything down so you can see the label on the parameters. We're taking an oscillator, reset counter, we're outputting done pulse, and we've got the string output. We don't have to specify a size because it's a string that's going out into simple. If it was a string coming into the module, we would have to specify the size here. This next part here, we're using something called input validation. That's what you would see on a web page where it only lets you enter like an email address or a phone number. We're tracking the time in seconds in this module and I'm using a 16-bit integer, just a regular unsigned integer, which has a total value of 65,535. So we have to multiply the minutes out to get it into seconds. So this is kind of the maximum before we'll run over the counter. So that's why I have these boundaries. Seconds, we've limited it from 0 to 59, and minutes, we've limited it from 0 to 1,091. And I've basically done that so that it won't overrun what a 16-bit integer can hold once we multiply it out into seconds. Then we've got counter, which is a global variable in our module. Then I've got a couple of functions here. This update output generates the text in minute, minute, colon, second, seconds, and it's padded with zeros. So assuming that we've got our time in seconds, We've got a local variable here of minutes and seconds and minutes equals counter divided by 60. So that's going to return us an integer of the number of minutes. We're using the modulo operator here, which is not something that I use very often. That's basically giving us the remainder when we divide by 60. So that gives us the seconds component. So we just use make string into remaining time dollar sign. That's our output string. Percent zero two basically pads it by zeros and makes it two characters. The U is a format specifier for an unsigned integer, and then we have the colon, and then the same thing for seconds. So that just writes it out to a string. We've also got a function for initialize counter, or init counter, and that's basically taking our input in parameters, the number of minutes, times 60 to convert to seconds, plus seconds. So that updates this global variable of counter. So the module keeps track of the number of seconds that are remaining, and then it updates the output, which generates the string. Next, we come to our digital inputs. Reset counter just initializes the counter. So that's this here. That's the same thing that happens in function main when the program starts up. And then the last thing here is the oscillator. So this is hit every second. If the counter is greater than zero, then we'll decrease it by one. So we're just counting down one second every single time. If it's equal to zero, 
we'll pulse that done pulse, and then we'll update the output, call that function. So once that's all done, press start, and it starts counting down. This is our oscillator that's decrementing the seconds. When it gets to the end, it fires the done pulse, which triggers our one shot that drives this, and it pops down. I also wanted to explain the rest of this logic. So from this busy run countdown, I'm running my oscillator, which I said before is pulsing once a second. I've also run it through this not, so that I have this not running. And the only thing that I'm using that for is the start button here has an enable join. So when it's running, the enable join is low. When it's not running, the enable join is high, so then it turns black and you can press it again. The one shot here basically just stretches out our done pulse to drive that done page pop-up. This pulse length, I could have increased the value here in simple plus, but I decided to do it in simple windows because it makes it easier to change and you don't have to modify the module. Thanks for watching this video and hopefully you found it useful. Maybe you can even use the example code on some of your projects. Please subscribe to the channel so you can get notifications when we release new videos. And like I always say, leave a comment below if you have anything that you want to talk about related to Crestron or simple programming or simple plus programming. Thanks and we'll see you in the next video.